Ever since I was young, I've always wanted a real life grappling hook kind of after seeing them in things like Just Cause, Sass Creed, Batman, Overwatch, Titanfall. The list goes on, but although they're everywhere in fiction, they're not everywhere in my local grocery store for some reason, so I figured if I wanted one, I was going to have to make it myself. G'day, I'm JT, and about a year ago, at an internship with the YouTube channel Hacksmith Industries, I started work on this. A real life grappling hook gun that can shoot a hook up into the air and then winch you on after it. And since then I've made a series of videos on my attempts of turning it from that proof of concept into the greatest grappling gun the world has ever seen. And you can find that in a playlist in the description down below if you're interested. Now, let me demonstrate its qualities for you. So, it's got a lightweight aluminium chassis that supports all the components, including a really hefty electric skateboard motor, which gets a torque multiplication of 9 by a gearbox. There's a compact CO2 launcher I mounted to the side, made from hydraulic and paintball parts, and the motor controller sits on top. The whole device can be enabled or disabled with a small, high current activation key. The grappling hook is a tiny, reliable and safe design that I invented for my Spider-Man project, and the whole device is controlled by your thumb operating a small throttle wheel on the side with the handle. Two pulleys are used to keep the rope perfectly in line with your hand to stop it twisting your arm. Learn that the hard way. The handle is wrapped in leather for grip and style, and the motor controller is, in turn, controlled by a custom circuit board with a microcontroller that I programmed. There's an aluminium spool to hold 14 meters of paracord, which is nice because it's strong, cheap and stretchy. The whole winch is powered by about 50 volts worth of lithium batteries, while the launcher is powered by 12 gram CO2 cartridges. Finally, for extra comfort, a harness can be attached to a loop at the back. Anyway, let's go give this lovely piece of tech a proper test. So, this device is very cool, but two things that it isn't is well tested and safe. And so, for the first test involving dramatic heights, ideally, I thought I'd like to keep the risk of serious injury or death towards the lower side of the spectrum, if possible. So I rang up a local trampoline park and asked them, hey, do you mind if I test this out using your airbag and auto belay units? And surprisingly, they said, yes, absolutely, even during opening hours if you like, which is pretty unexpectedly generous. So, let's go. Once I arrived at the trampoline park, the manager gave me the rundown, and understandably, I had to minimise or avoid shooting the grappling hook near lights or people, surprisingly. So for this first test, I climbed up the wall to place the hook manually. Then I hopped down and clipped in for the first big test. And... Pretty good is right. I got 10 metres up the wall in just over 3 seconds. That means I could travel up a building at about a story per second. The manager was a bit concerned about the slack left by the belay unit, but on the plus side, this way it's clear that it wasn't assisting me in any way. We added a chair to give me a bit of space before hitting the ground if something were to go wrong. Not that I have any experience with that. I also tried a hybrid of winching and climbing, but yeah, it wasn't great. Spider-Man! Next, I wanted to go safety line free over at the airbag, and as long as I was careful with my placement, I was even able to shoot the grappling hook there. That's the plan. And with the hook up, I was free to soar gracefully over the airbag. Nice! until the sharp edge of the ceiling beam cut the rope. That's the downside of paracord. Okay, so let me tell you something fun. I've actually only been using this at about 75% power. And right now, I can actually reprogram the ESC to allow me to get to set power. So we'll just try that out and see how that goes. Don't want to break my ESC. 
So having tempted fate a little bit there, I thought I'd just throw a quick intermission in here before finishing the rest of the testing, because basically I'm not the only one to try to make a combined grappling gun winch thing, and I thought it'd be really cool to highlight some of the other attempts I've seen, and also point out what makes mine different to those. The first actually comes from one of my favourite Mythbusters episodes, along with the paper crossbow and the leaf floor hovercraft. And in this one they tried to build a grappling winch gun combination same as me. And although they couldn't quite get the gun hook part of it working, they made a pretty cool motorised grappling winch. I do reckon mine was technically superior to theirs, for one it's a lot faster, and it doesn't require a battery pack on your belt, so it's fully self-contained and also it lets you go back down again, which was a bit of a problem for theirs. Jamie has no choice but to sever the line. But, on the other hand, I also have 14 years of battery technology improvements on my side as well. My second pick is what actually appears to be a commercial product from a company, Atlas Devices. And this one's, you know, being a commercial product, it's got to be a lot safer and more reliable than mine by quite a long way. But, without the launcher and rope added, it's still huge. And with the launcher and rope added, the thing is absolutely enormous. Can you imagine Batman carting a trailer behind him everywhere he goes? Another great one is YouTube's very own Colin Furs, who made one out of a cordless drill. It looks really advanced as far as the launcher was concerned. He made this like custom spool valve to keep it compact, but also make it really powerful. But the hook did seem a little bit finicky and it didn't store that much rope, like a couple of meters maybe. So he didn't have the greatest range. Seemed like there was a few belt mounted components too, so not self-contained either. Also, cordless drill, like six, seven hundred watts. This is 10,000, so bit of a power difference there. But nothing against the guy, because Colin made his in like a couple of weeks, whereas this has taken me about a year. And plus, he left a really nice comment a little while ago, which I found really encouraging. So if you're watching this, Colin, Cheers mate, I'm standing on the shoulders of a giant here. And speaking of YouTube giants, Hacksmith Industries also gave it a shot with a Batman grappling ascender. This one was like the Atlas Devices one in that it would let you feed rope continuously, so you could use a rope of any length. But it was still pretty big, so a bit later on the Hacksmith channel put up another video of trying to make a smaller, more compact one with uh, some random intern. I don't know. So there were definitely some solid creations there, but do you think this one could potentially be the best? Anyway, I'll let you get back to testing. Or I'll let me get back to testing. Okay, we are now running at 10 kilowatts. That's a lot of watts. Cool, so I'm just gonna see if I can go and get up that wall. Again, pretending there's no delay here, it's just for my safety. All right, let's go. Well, there you go. I reckon that was a pretty good test. Big thanks to Olivier and the rest of the staff at BeUp for being such a great help. But still kind of want to try it out a bit more in a real world situation. Okay, so out of the park and gonna aim for that fairly high tree branch up there. So, see how that goes. All right, well, we're over. Beautiful. And that is now hooked on. Well, I guess I'll see you up there. Hmm. <laughs> Beautiful, just like a real superhero with slight coordination issues. All right, so you may have noticed that for that last shot, it made it over, started going up, all was good, but I wasn't wearing the harness, and that's fine. Um, but you can probably imagine it's quite hard to precisely position your thumb when you're hanging all of your weight off these four fingers. So the harness just makes that a lot easier. There we go, and then attach that back onto the carabiner, and now I'm hooked on. Consistency that started showing up earlier is getting worse. So it turns out I think 200 amps was a bit too much for the ESC. 
It said it could do up to 600 in short bursts, but ESCs are always finicky and it's just slowly been getting more and more unpredictable as you just saw. I really would have liked to have gotten one final scene of like shooting, winching up, climbing onto the branch, then returning back down to the ground all in one quick shot, but unfortunately I think I missed my chance for that. There are a few small things I would have changed, like I wanted to clean up the wiring just that bit more and I was also going to add a spring-loaded cutter so that even while winching like halfway through I could cut the paracord. That would have just given me a bit more freedom to not be tied to a tree the whole time. But generally I'm really really pleased with the work that I put in and I think it's turned out really well. I'm very proud of it. And it's kind of one of a kind and possibly even best in its class. So I think I'm happy to put this project to rest now. And the next one is going to be resuming Spider-Man. So check back in the next video if you want to see some of that. All the best guys. Thanks a lot. I'll see you then. Okay. Uh, I'll stick with my e-bike. No, no, this is the future, I tell you. But the future's not quite working right now. Just give me a second. Oh. Yeah.